Okay, now it seems to be working. Hello, everybody. It's March 5th, and I wanted to come out and show you the garden at the beginning of March in Salinas, California. And it's been raining. We've had rain for a couple days out here, which is unusual. I mean, that's not unusual. We do have rain. I mean, but just don't see. It's not a lot of raining, raining. Anyway, so here we are in the backyard. <clears throat> And here's where we're at. Looks like our plum tree's got the flowers growing on it pretty good. Remember, there's four, three or four varieties. Here comes Mark. Oh, hi. I just wondered who you were talking to. Mark wouldn't know who I was talking to. Say hi. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> he wouldn't know who I was talking to because I told him I was walking down to the uh, farmer's market to get some kettle corn, and I stopped to do this. So here's where we are. We have plums and we have apricots that are becoming in so as i was saying these the plums and the apricots and the cherry tree are multiple varieties on one tree so they're just grafted on so you'll see in some areas there's a lot more uh, flowers because it's a different kind of tree you know a different kind of apricot so you can see there's lots of them over here <laughs> you guys um and then in the other part of the tree there's not so I have been planting. I spent the last, oh, the weather we were having was incredible. So I came out and did a lot of planting. And let's see how they're doing. Because I think we've got some fun stuff going on. Now, I cleaned out my my tomatoes that I've had. These are left over from last year. See, this is last year. I haven't done anything. But what I did is I thinned them out. And, oh, look at there. Look at that. So I thinned them out and got rid of a lot of this stuff in the middle. So there would be a lot more airflow and got rid of a lot of the dead leaves. And what you want to do is you want to try to get it so... Now, keep in mind, I am no expert in this. But I got rid of all the branches and stuff that were down here. And you want to get rid of all these offshoots and get it just to get the stakes. So you really have to kind of think about that. I haven't really been paying as much attention, but I should. And these are leftover tomatoes from last year also. And I have planted a couple new ones. Here's one. It is, I don't know what it is. It's an early girl. So I put an early girl in there. I bought them from the store. I've got some, I've got some seeds. I've got to try to grow them because I want to try to grow some different kinds of varieties that aren't normally at the store. And I picked up these flowers at the CVS for like two bucks. They're just so pretty. And then of course, you know, when you have flowers, it helps pollinate, brings more, more pollinating things over to the plants you do want pollinated. I picked up these little, these little uh, carrots at the dollar store for Easter. They gave me like 10 of them, little pieces of wood, and so I painted them. <laughs> and then I sprayed them with uh, polyurethane and then put it, and then stapled them onto my beds because these are all carrots here. And I don't know if you remember from my last video that I cleaned all this out over here so I can actually get to the carrots. And they look like they're doing okay. This is beets. I didn't know if these would come back because I transplanted these from somewhere else. It looks like they're gonna, they're gonna do it. And um, I get often asked why do I have all this stuff on top of the flower beds? It's because I have cats and there are cats in the neighborhood that are outdoor cats and they will come and make. They'll sleep in there, or other things. So <laughs> Mark cracks me up because he doesn't like that I have a toilet tank back out here but I thought you know what the heck so radishes and beets are growing in here and they look like they're doing pretty good I could probably harvest these radishes anytime oh like look at that one I maybe I'll get it when I come back because I don't want to go back in the house I cut back my Cecile broomer completely it was growing into these giant trees up here so I cut it way back because it was just getting too crazy and I'm going to keep it cut back. And I painted this fence. I did that a few weeks ago. And back in here is where I have my compost. Now, in California, we're supposed to take our compost and put it in. We're supposed to collect it in our kitchen. And then we're supposed to put it in the yard waste. And it's supposed to go to the yard waste people. And so I've never done that. I've always composted my entire life. So I'm not... I am don't do that. So... This tree, let me back up, it's growing way over my property and I cut it way back so I'd have more sunshine back here. 
So we just always put stuff in the compost piles back here and then I turn them. But what I'm doing this year, because I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, is trying to compost in place. And that means I'm doing more container composting too. So that means pulling the stuff. Don't let it fully compost and just put it into your, um, whatever you're, whatever you're composting in, whatever you're growing in. Now back here, these are drawers that I had. I don't like to get rid of anything. And as you can see, there's carrots in here and there's radishes and these are radishes and these are carrots. And I bought radishes that I have never seen before, just kind of fun seed ones. And it's really fun because, again, like I said, I won't eat them. So I have to have some people come over for a party so that you guys can have some fresh grown vegetables with me. But you can see that these are all, these are all radishes coming through. Look at them. All kinds of different ones. This is white icicle. This is radish French French something breakfast. So we'll see what they end up doing. But I've got the carrots back here are small carrots. They're they're just like you know an inch and a half wide. This I just kind of did is piece of wood box that I had around the house that was just sitting in the garage somewhere, and I went and got a six pack of peas. For, they were at Home Depot, and I put this, I painted the fence and put this in, and I need to start putting them so that they start twirling around. Look at them go. They've just done amazing. Look at this. They were just little tiny things, and these are the Iceland poppies that I pop, put here because I had room, and they look so nice. Here's the container things I've been doing. So this is new. This used to be against this fence was a, a giant jasmine. That was great. I loved it, but it just took over. It took over. It came way over. I don't have it here anymore because it's just such prime real estate here for, for gardening. So I've got this one tub. I don't think I'm going to poke holes, holes in them. We'll see how long I can go without having to poke holes in them. But these have just been sitting around empty. We got rid of so much stuff Mark and I did whenever we had the major remodel in the garage and I'm this red one I'm going to put some bricks and things down at the bottom because I don't need obviously to fill that much space but I'm going to do put something heavy in there and then I'm going to put dry stuff leaves branches whatever in there and then I will put compost and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put compost from my bucket like from the kitchen and just dump it in there and then I'll probably put some garden soil. I have some, sorry, airplane going by. I have some miracle Grow that I bought. It was on sale. Or I will put the fine compost that I get from my garden that I'm composting. But the thing is, I can't get, get to it fast enough. I need to eat. We need to have more vegetables and stuff. I need people to bring me their vegetables, their, uh, their, their garden scraps. But composting is so easy to do, especially if, you know, if you want to start with just like a bucket like this, a five gallon bucket you got at the store, something you pick up, any of that is fine. Um, so you start off with something dry at the bottom, leaves, newspaper, you want to rip up the newspaper and kind of scatter it amongst everything, but then kitchen garden scraps, and then you put some kind of soil on the top and you can get any kind of soil, just buy jungle soil if you want. Your kitchen scraps have a lot of nutrients in it. So what I've done is I've planted, these are lima beans. I've never grown lima beans before, but I love lima beans. So I've, all this is going to be lima beans. And I bought some um, spinach, chard, and broccoli. Foods I will never eat. And I <laughs> put Markwell and my friends will. I put them in the tubs. So we'll see how this goes. Back in here, and this will get sun. These are Kentucky Wonder green beans. And I put, I think there's some beets and some carrots back in there. So we'll have to follow it and see what happens. Strawberries all over here. And then all against the wall is um, beans or peas. Something I can't remember now. I'd have to look. But And then I brought out this. This is my mom's old um, metal washing pan. We used to use it for dunking for apples. I guess you'd wash your dog in it, but I don't have a dog. But... <laughs> So we used to keep it for dunking for apples. So I've got that. 
and I planted it with broccoli. Same thing. I didn't put any holes in it. I just put like bricks or something at the bottom and then I put underneath it um, dry matter and then um, compost or live stuff from the garden. And then I've got some cucumbers and stuff. So this will be sunny here in a few hours, so it's not so bad. Here's the dry matter. So I went and I picked, I've still got a lot more work to do in the front yard. This is all Mexican sage. It's just branches that I was gonna put in the yard waste. And I decided not to do that. I'm gonna put it in and put it in here. But now, one of the things I gotta be careful about is you don't wanna put stuff like this. This is a weed and this will get into your garden and you don't wanna have that seed in there. So I gotta make sure that I, I get that out of there before maybe I'll even let it dry out because I don't want any crabgrass growing in my, in my uh, compost. So that's the thing you gotta watch out for is weeds. Um, you don't want to put dandelions or weeds or anything that you don't want replicated all over the garden. You've got to make sure it's not in your compost. So it is a little, you got to be a little more careful than you would think. Let's see what else is out here. My California poppies are coming in. These are all wild. As I said, don't put anything in your compost. You don't want everywhere all over your garden. And California poppies, that's what happens. You get California poppies in your compost and or in your garden. They're everywhere, so I have to pull them out. All this down here on the ground, see this on the left-hand side? That's all California poppies. They look great right now, but they'll take over. Um, whole bin of radishes. This is a piece of wood that, uh, a little wood thing that my friend gave me, Marina. And back in here is lettuce. And I've got some seed lettuce. Look at this, some I bought at the grocery, uh, at the Orchard Supply. And some of it is a seed. And you can see the little seeds coming in. And sunflowers. And we have our um, three different kinds, I think, of, of uh, black blackberries. I sure would love to grow these. But the problem is they take over. They get into the ground. And you just are find the roots everywhere. They're so much better than what you get at the, garden, at the store. But they don't make it into the house because I, I come out here and I pick them and pop them in my mouth. <laughs> so good. Over here we have onions. I'm going to put some cucumbers or squash in here as well to grow amongst the onions. Some carrots. Here's a couple carrots that are just here. Back here's my storage area I just made a few months ago. I love it. Um, oranges. And back in here is a little wild still. I need to trim this back. These are all left over from last year. I had a tomato growing in here. I suppose I could try to put another tomato in there. And more oranges. I've never just, I've had these oranges for years. I have no idea where to plant them. I keep saying I'm gonna do it in the front yard when I re redo the front yard, which I haven't done yet. But uh, they're still in buckets. <laughs> And you can see all of my um, flowers are coming in, hydrangea. And under the trees this year, we've decided, well, I decided, I just took and put a lot of plants underneath it. So this should be just gorgeous whenever they all take over. Here's Imogen. Hi, Imogen. She's got the sneezies. Yeah, you got the sneezies. Look at the star jas a pink jasmine coming in. My goodness. Wow. Oh, more oranges. It's real exciting. <laughs> I've got three or four different varieties of oranges. There's this one that's a hydrangea next to it. I mean, these get really huge. There's some of our neighbors and stuff will have these giant orange plants with oranges on it. Here, they, you know, they're not doing that great because I haven't got them in the ground. I just kind of ignored them. Anyway, oh, I was going to show you. So I just keep a dollar, this is from the dollar store, just a bucket in the house. You can see it's just leftovers from, you know, stale bread, napkin, uh, whatever from making dinner, vegetables wise, and grapefruit, eggshells, strawberry pits or whatever. I just take them and I put them, it's on the counter. It doesn't smell or anything. And then you take it and take it outside whenever it gets full. And I put water in here too, like from, um, you know, if you're rinsing out your tea or your coffee and um, 
I put I put the water in the blue bucket. Hi, Pavel. Oh, yay. <laughs> awesome. So I put the water in the bucket so that I can, when I take it and put it in the compost pile out here, then I'm adding water to the compost pile. And I don't, we don't get a lot of water out here. And I sometimes forget to water the compost pile. So you want to keep it wet. There's some cucumber and stuff in here. So I'm just going to just dump it in there. And that's all you do. Rinse this out and throw the rinse water in the garden and then start again. So what I did this year with this tomatoes, as I said, I'm trying to do this composting in place. I dug holes in here, just dug a lot of holes, and then I filled it with compost just like I did right now. Just dumped it in and then covered up with soil. So it's going to compost. It's going to make worms. The worms are going to come. Oh, I found some worms and I just added them to my soil more. And when you have some worms, you get a lot of worms. So this should be extremely compost heavy and very, very nutrient rich. This should be a, an amazing tomato a garden, way more than it was last year. But the ones I just dumped in the compost, I did that because I don't really have any place to put them this moment. So I was, like I said, I haven't done this bed yet. So um, I'll take them out of there. It's nice to let it compost a little bit and it's just easier to work with and when, with stuff that's just so... Um, fresh out of the garden, but you can. Oh, my little butterfly. I went to the dollar store when it was the winter and, it, and I just bought a whole bunch of wooden little things to, and I painted them and, and then put polyurethane on them. And I've just been putting them around the garden. So, let me put this back here. This is just engaging work right now. I was watching me. Mark did a magic show downtown, and so, yeah, we had coffee grounds, tea, all that, definitely. And this is my little driveway garden. A little gargoyle, can you see them? And then daffodils already and along my driveway. Look at the sunflowers. Mark loves the sunflowers. I actually like them, too. And this is a marigold tree I bought, kind of a tree. It's all dead and dying. So you just break off the little marigolds things and just throw them in the ground somewhere and you'll have more marigolds than you know what to do with. I just haven't dug it out. I've got to deal with that, but I haven't done it yet. And back here, I got ran out of energy and didn't get it done, but it's tomato left over from last year. So what I did is I cleaned up the ground because these things will take over. They just, they just grow and grow and grow this kind of tomato so what I did is I can, you want to get it off the ground because that's when it gets rotten from you know bugs eat it and stuff like that so you want to get it up and you want to get out as much of the branches as you can so that it's airy so that the air can come through it so I'm gonna do something with this back here someday but I haven't yet I just saw a nice tomato look at that tomato oh yeah Mark went to the store and got tomatoes and I said why we've got tomatoes there's not a lot but these are left over from last year still growing you can see where they're where they're coming in. Let's see if I see some more like these are all that's gonna be a tomato. When you see these, you're supposed to flick them with your fingers like that. Here's another one. And what it does is it pollen it pollinates, it makes it can't really hurt it. it, makes it so the pollen goes from from the flowers to the other flowers easier. Oh look, here's another one. See? So my freesias, look at these. Oh my lord. But I dug all this out and I've still got a lot more to do. Here's my um, bougainvillea. It's growing now that I've got stuff out. But the reason why the tomatoes are staying so well is because the sun comes in and it heats up the store. Like that. It heats it up. And it heats up, the, not the door, the wall, the stucco wall. And then it keeps this all really warm. So that's part of the reason why it's um, doing so well. So I'm going to go to the farmer's market. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.